What can people do today that will make them happier, Lloyd? What a lovely episode to, to record, Ben. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can I just say, yeah. I'm really privileged to be doing this with you. <laughs> I am as and well. I've been very happy to share our tips with the world. Yeah. Um, but to answer that, I've been reflecting a lot on younger Lloyd and what he wanted uh, to make him happy vodka. in the past. <laughs> there was times when Domino's and vodka was top of the list at university. <laughs> okay. But, so six-year-old Lloyd dreamed about going to Disneyland. That's what would make six-year-old Lloyd happy. Dad always promised he'd take us, but he never did. Yeah, thanks, Ed. Ten-year-old Lloyd dreamed of having a basketball net. Fourteen-year-old mm-hmm. Lloyd dreamed of having a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> What dream? Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Twenty-year-old uh, uh, Lloyd dreamed of having a family one day and reading a bedtime story together. <laughs> this is cringy, isn't it? <laughs> go on, go on. Twenty-two-year-old Lloyd dreamed to work anywhere where his boss wasn't a dickhead. Twenty-six-year-old Lloyd dreamed of making the business work so he could for- afford to run a car and didn't have to get a bus to work. Thirty-two-year-old <laughs> yeah. Lloyd dreamed of losing weight and feeling healthier. All those dreams came true, guys. (laughs) All those dreams came true. Can we just uh, put our hands together for Lloyd? Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Well done. (laughs) So that was one of the cringiest things I've ever done. (laughs) But the point I'm trying to make, (laughs) I kind of regret doing that, um, is I, I think like so many of us, so all those things at one point, I was like, oh, I'd be so happy if this happened. Mm. And... I think quite often stuff, great stuff happens. Our life goes brilliantly we and just, we're just like, okay, on to the next thing. Such a good point. And I think something that's massively in the last few years made me so much happier is when good things happening, actually mm. like taking a step back and going, oh, that's actually really good. Yeah. Like we said, Dan, some of our, obviously this is business anchors. So talking about business, we, when we first started the business, we would win a deal like in those early months where mm. we're like trying to get our first customers. And compared to now, the values of those deals were much, much lower. And we would like basically holiday. stop working, go on a night out and just absolutely celebrate and be <laughs> so ecstatic. Right. Yeah. And now sometimes we close deals that like five figure deals. Mm. We probably still get excited for the six figure ones, mm. but five figure deals like tens of thousands of pounds and just kind of go, okay, yeah, nice, yeah. right. And um, have you done that podcast prep for? And it's like, why, why yeah. aren't we thinking, f- fucking hell, like this is great? And I think, yeah. So that's my point to start the episode. I think try and think of these massive successes and actually feel happy about them rather than just going on to the next thing. Literally this week, we we won a five figure, tens of thousands, yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, and um, <laughs> I. Uh, we used to always do this thing where we had a, like an air horn in the office and we'd air horn and we'd all be like, hey. Yeah. And I literally did exactly that. I just didn't. I was just like, oh, yeah, on to the next one. Yeah. But you're exactly right. Like, we should be. Like, I got a basketball net. That was my dream. <laughs> yeah. I did that. <laughs> yeah. And I know, I know, like, it was so cringy me going through mm. those things. But when I was younger, I'm just, I'm just being open here, guys. This makes me sound like an absolute twat. But I used to dream of like having a Boston child net. and like a, a wife and i used to think like oh imagine like doing like bedtime stories mm. and that and having like a lovely little family yeah oh, that is wholesome and i i do remember like w- when uh leo was like one or something we were doing it and i i um fuck this is getting cringier <laughs> i i had a little cry because i was like oh man this yeah. is it like this is what i dreamed of and stuff. yeah but it's so easy to think yeah of these things in the past that were like absolute dreams will make you so happy. And now it just happens. You're like, oh yeah, cool. I've got a lovely family. I've got a question for you. Yeah. What does, I was trying to remember your age. What does 30, I'm 33, four, three year old Lloyd dream of. Did you yeah. say that in here or not? No, no, I could add more cringy stuff. No. Like what would make me really happy. In yeah. The like future? now, like you've achieved all those things. So yeah. you've, got, you've completed life. Yeah. 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 I'm the best. At like everything. what, what's the next, like, is there a next thing? Or are you more like showing gratitude for what you've got in your sort of like... There's loads of stuff that I think Mm. I'd be really happy if I did though. Like Mm. there's things around my health, like I've lost some weight and I've I've got much healthier habits in the last like six to 12 months. So continuing that and being healthier, but also like growing this business and Mm. 
experiencing more success there and meeting new people in the business and seeing them thrive and us thriving mm. and stuff. So 100% still got, yeah. but but we just need to make sure when that happens, it shouldn't just be like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. another great project in the business or, mm. okay, yeah, lost another stone. Yeah, well, you're right. Actually, Appreciate it. Yeah. That's a really good, I think that's a really good point to start on. Yeah. Um, and I think like, I, I hope you anchors enjoy this episode because we've both thought a lot about the different parts of our life that we do get happiness from. So I'm hoping that, you anchors will listen to this and you will actually have actionable things to do that are going to help rather than just, just listening to Lloyd's stories about basketball there, I think there's a lot of people that have similar experiences to you and I, Dan, mm. day in day-to-day life, but feel a lot less happy. Really? Yeah, I think so. What? I get, go on, go into that a bit. Well, I, I meet people at business networking that have a lovely family life and um good money and have a growing business and they're not happy just uh, mad mm. at the world and unhappy and and i kind of think like oh you're experiencing similar things very to me. similar things to my life and i'm really happy Do yeah. you know what i mean so i think that's why it's useful to listeners it's it, you don't have yeah. to have you don't have to be a millionaire and have naked women dancing around you all the time <laughs> or men <laughs> okay um to be happy. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It, it's not like... So what? So, so, so is it, is, are those people who have a similar situation to you, they're not doing anything that you just said, which is appreciating when good things well, are happening? Well, that's one of the things they're not doing. Yeah. But also there's other things in this episode, I yeah. think. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess that's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't need to be, right, you've got to mm. buy this course for 7997 and change yeah. your life and then you'll be happy. Mm. I, I kind of feel like maybe there's part of it you don't actually have to change your life and yeah. you can still be happy. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. Can I share my, the one thing that, well, let me tell you a story actually. There's, there's, yeah. there's two things I've done in June that I honestly believe have made me feel the happiest I've ever felt. Okay. Who's June? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Sorry. I don't know why I turned into an absolute lad for a minute there. Lads, lads, lads. I don't usually make comments oh, like God. that. The guys, that was just a lighthearted joke. Okay, so let me rephrase that. There's two things I've done this month that um, have made me incredibly happy and it's all to do with investing in my health. Good. So whenever I um, I talk to you about this, Lloyd, Mm. the one thing that I'm always happy to to spend money on and invest in is anything to do with my health. Yeah. And two things I did this month. So one thing I did was I upgraded my gym to a gym that... um, costs about six times as much bloody hell. but it's got a pool sauna a steam room and and all these different things and every day now i go there and i swim and i, I uh train and i do a sauna and steam room and my whoop band tells me that i'm in the best shape of my life yes, this week Dan. um and just mentally and stuff like it it really makes me feel good it makes me think like also the, the second thing i've done is uh stop drinking alcohol in june i'm having a bit of a break mm. from alcohol um and those two things have really made me feel good. Um, mm. And like on top of that, things like us playing squash and mm. uh, going to the gym in general, all these things make me feel incredibly happy. And I think there's lots of people out there that feel like stressed or anxious or moody. And, and I think that putting more focus on your health mm. rather than like going out and stuff. I was speaking. So in, uh, in the gym that you're talking about, I was talking to you and another friend the other day whilst we were in the outdoor pool. Yes. <laughs> Oh, we sound like such middle class dickheads. <laughs> um, and I was saying, it's like, it's such a simple thing when you realise what it's like. I was feeling quite stressed about work and things the last few weeks. Mm. And I just, oh, yeah, the- I just kept sort of go- having a couple of beers and hoping that would make things better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it was like, oh, no, I'm just feel a bit worse the next day. Probably <gasps> worse at dealing with these issues. <laughs> and I feel worse. And yeah. then I... For like three days, I just got good sleep, went to the yeah. gym, ate healthily, and was suddenly like, yeah. oh, I feel brilliant. The other week, Lloyd and I were like doing quite an intense strategy thing, and he like was really struggling to figure stuff out, and he doesn't normally. And I was like, are you right? And he's like, I'm just struggling to do this. And then he told me in the gym that he'd just been drinking beers every night. And Well, by the way, <laughs> I do literally mean like probably like I had a couple of beers yeah. like three or four times. Did that solve your problems? No, no. <laughs> It made me worse at solving my problems. <laughs> yeah. Like even even that drinking to that extent. Mm. And don't get me wrong, like no judgment for people that have a drink. So like obviously we do. We love stuff, yeah, but, we love it. Uh, <laughs> love it. We love it. Um, but it's just so simple when it's like, oh, when I 
don't try and get alcohol to solve my problems and I have healthy habits, suddenly I'm better mm. at solving my problems and I feel happier. Yeah. Who would have thought it? Yeah. And one final point on that, and I don't know if anyone else can relate to this. So I do, I love going out and going to the pub and that kind of stuff. So I have breaks love alcohol it. and alcohol. I really love it. Um, Is that where you met June? <laughs> shut up. <laughs> and uh, but and like those nights out, I'll happily spend two, three times the amount the gym costs a month on a night out. Mm. Just like, yeah, buy one drinks. Yeah, yeah. Thinking I'm cool. Um, and then I'll say, <laughs> yeah. And then I'll, and then I won't, I won't invest in a gym membership where it makes me feel so good every month. Yeah. And it got me thinking like, if I just don't go out for one night a month, I mm. can easily like cover that. So it's just, it's just like reshaping the way you think, like what are you spending your money on? Mm. And, and then are you questioning, oh, you know, getting better quality food, that shop will be slightly more, but then are you, you know, yeah. spending it on drinking oil? Stop buying vodka, start <laughs> buying gym membership. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're also contradicting ourselves because we, we do both like, but <laughs> <laughs> buy vodka and gym memberships. <laughs> That's the path to happiness. But no, yeah. the overall point of investing in your health, like our experience, a hundred percent is that, and it's not just expensive gym memberships. Like I went for a bike ride last mm. night and watched the sunset. Nice. Lovely, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Felt much better. I'm very cringy this episode. You are quite cringy. Yeah. Talking about investing in your health, Lloyd. Yes. I noticed your next thing is something to do with a life jacket. And I haven't read it, but I read the title. I'm pretty intrigued. Are you going to say something really like an analogy that's cringe? or? Yeah. <laughs> you actually are, aren't 100%. you? A hundred percent. hundred percent. Cringe Lloyd alert. So. <laughs> are you ready? Oh, to no. Jump on my little boat of happiness. <laughs> oh, no, you're not. Are you ready? Oh, go on. Come on board. <laughs> So, so I'll get to the cringe in a minute. Don't yeah. worry, guys. Um, Don't worry, it's coming. But um, you made a point in episode 150 of like spinning lots of plates, an analogy that isn't yes. cringy, but you know, yes, take I me did. to the circus. Yeah. And um, you, I, I sort of felt you were quite self-aware and it was such a good point of um, not necessarily thinking you're going to be perfect at everything, but you said, I've got a lot of things going on in my life and I feel like I've got the balance... Spinning them all yeah, right. I'm like doing all right with all of them and, yeah. and got the balance fairly right. And I think um, you understand that you're not going to be perfect in every area of your life, but you're mm. going to do the best with kind of what you can yeah. and that kind of thing. And that balance, I think, is is really important. Um, and If you're balancing on a boat so, and you fall in, is, yeah. it, is that it? Is that, uh, okay, kind on. of. We're getting close. It's cringier. <laughs> so you're, you, you've got your boat. Okay. okay. Your little boat of happiness. Yeah. All right. And people and things are constantly getting on that boat that make it sink down a little bit more. Okay. Okay. So you've got your dickhead boss. He walks on and asks you to make a logo pop more. <laughs> yeah. And you think, bloody hell, my boat's sinking here, mate. Yeah. You are. You keep telling me to change the size of that logo and making it pop. It doesn't make yeah, any make sense. Make it greener. Yeah, make it greener. Make it purpler. <laughs> and That's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> purpler. Um, more purple. You're, you know, at the weekend, your slightly racist Uncle Brian comes around and starts moaning about the world onto your boat. And you're like, oh, that's my boat singing a bit more, Brian. Mm -hmm. You're a big bloke. Oh, we're really yeah. sinking my happiness boat here. Mm -hmm. um, then someone chucks a black sack on. What's in there? Oh, shit. It's parking tickets. It's that tropical fish tank you said you look after and now it's full of dead fish. Um, and all your... your ironing that needs to be done. It's all on there. All these things bringing you down, Dan. Oh, interesting. They're sinking okay. your boat. You're feeling a le See where little, going with this. little less happy. Um, but now I've realized those things are always going to get on your boat. You can't really avoid them. There's always mm. going to be bad things that sink your boat a little bit, Dan. Mm. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We don't want to drown. So we need to put a life jacket on. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, uh, I'm just comparing like our conversations, like you know, you like Jordan Peterson, into, like, and they're so like intellectual, and we're fucking making up these. No, this is good though. Go on, keep going. So, you need a life jacket. So if if your boat's sinking, you're still going to float, then. Mm. So you're going to do something positive. Get that get that exercising in the morning life jacket on. Bring yourself <laughs> up a bit more. Get that playing Lego with your son after work life jacket on. Bloody hell, I'm feeling buoyant. Okay. <laughs> Get that learning Spanish with your with your wife life jacket on. Oh God, I'm floating. 
<laughs> you really so, shoehorned right, this one. Okay, I forget the analogy, right? Forget the analogy. No, I'd see what you've the done. The analogy was shit and cringy. No, right? I do what you've done. But now. what my point is, mm. um, I feel like so so. Uh, the last couple of weeks then we've had mm. some challenges at work and we've been really mm. like working hard and so my brain's been a bit frazzled and i've been feeling a bit shitter about work mm. than i normally do and i i guess my point is that those things are always going to happen in life you're always mm. going to get an unexpected not always but you're going to get an unexpected parking ticket in the future your boss is going to be a dickhead in the future certainly a nolton their boss is going to be <laughs> hello <laughs> um <laughs> you're going to have relationship issues but if you can um, have sort of healthy, positive habits that you continue to do around that, yeah. like I found, uh, when I you're start, more buoyant. Well, you're, I'm, you, you're more buoyant. You got life jackets on, mate. <laughs> but when I like am doing more positive things, so like I said, I went to the gym and my sleep was better, and I was doing positive things with my friends and meeting people and having those things. Nothing changed at work. But I felt better because I had all those other things kind of balancing me out. It's like, yeah. okay, yeah, it's quite challenging at work. But I feel good about my health and I feel good about my relationships with my friends. Like I've met them a couple mm. of times. I feel like my finances are a good place because I did that budgeting thing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So even when there's things that bring you down, if you have other habits that are positive and keeping you happy... I feel like you kind of stay more on a level rather than in the past. I used to have like work was a bit shit, right? Well, I just get drunk and eat loads of pizza and I won't exercise. And you know, does it work? <laughs> younger Lloyd's thinking maybe this will make things better. Mm. <laughs> it didn't. To back up what you're saying, you told me something interesting in, in the gym that we now go to yeah. the other day. Um, you told me about on the, your fitness tracker week band, mm. You start, you, there's a journal thing you can do where you track your behavior to see how it impacts all your data around health. Yeah. I think you told me that you started tracking when you uh, have social situations where you hang out with friends or family. Yeah. And didn't you say it, it increased your recovery or something? Or yeah. like, which shows your, how positive so you're about bands, talking. they measure heart rate variability. And there's lots of studies to show it's a really good sign of kind of current and future health. And that's what kind of builds your recovery metric on your mm. weight band. And yeah, so I log, um, there's one of the options you can log because you choose what to log in your journal, mm. whether you've had time socializing with friends or family, basically. And on days that I do, on average, my recovery is 5% higher mm. um, uh, over the next 24 hours. And I do think I've been reading lots and lots. <laughs> I'm so clever. No, but I've, <laughs> I've been reading and kind of listening to podcasts lots on this subject and how mental health and physical health and everything. It's like so basically they're not even separate things. Like mm. the things going on mentally affect your physical health and have real world. And I suppose that's the first thing in my life that I've actually seen data on is like, shit actually like seeing friends or like going to visit my nan and granddad for a couple of hours and actually like, is having yeah. positive physical effects on my health yeah and again so yeah from my point of like right do these positive things and overall you're going to feel happier i think it's really a game changer i guess i'm just thinking from the anchor's point of view so i think this point is really interesting of finding those those life jackets that make you more buoyant yeah he's on right. it so you made if you made a few points there for the anchor's listening how do you find like Say I my boat's sinking and I haven't got enough life jackets mm. to keep me buoyant. How do you find those things that are going to help you be more buoyant? The things that the little nice things that are uh, you're doing. Like, how did you discover that uh, playing Lego with Leo was made? I you? I think in reality we all probably know the things that will make us feel better, but sometimes there it's hard to get out of our head. Mm. Like. I would say in reality, we all know if we if we ate really nutritious food every day, we'd feel happier and healthier. Mm. If we exercised more, we'd feel happier and healthier. If we played with our children rather than scrolling on our phones, we but they kind of take effort to get out of the current yeah. habits. Like it's good you you will probably feel better in the next forty eight hours if tonight you go on an hour long run and then you eat healthily than if you tonight you drink 12 beers yeah and i'm not by the way mm. perfectly fine if you drink 12 beers but i think we all kind of know that that is the truth but it takes more effort sometimes to do yeah. the things that actually make you feel happier i think there's a few key pillars like thinking of the themes in it. so there's mm. that we've discussed like there's there's social interaction yeah so, like and whether that's with fam like relationships yeah mm. whether that's with family friends your community mm. there's diet 
there's sleep mm. uh there's exercise like there's these pillars that you yeah. always hear people talking about that i guess you can try and look in those different sections yeah. and think i'm gonna pick I think something to do out of those there's also kind of there may be pillars around like learning new things and building skills yes. and things yeah i think that really that's something that you know I, i've been learning spanish and i've been learning to play chess and stuff mm. and it's weird uh, i've spoken about that weird little mental pat on the head if you think mm. i've learned five new words and it, it increases your happiness it's weird that is literally my next point okay. about building something yeah i i can't emphasize enough how much like although although growing Knowlton mm. has had its challenges, it's not just been all yeah, we're absolutely smashing it. Like it's a roller coaster of emotion sometimes, of constantly new fires come along. You need to figure out how to put them out and 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 that kind of thing. But the the fulfillment I get, and I don't know what you feel, but the fulfillment I get of having the having a goal, building something to try and get to that goal, facing challenges along the way, but overcoming them, mm. the fulfillment and the joy and happiness I get from that is is huge. And I think, like, I guess it, it got me thinking about this episode of what, like, anchors listening, what are you building? If, if, you, if you can't say that you're, there's something you're working on or mm. towards, then you're missing a huge opportunity to feel happy. Yeah. And that could be a business. It could be you're building your body to be better. Like you're, you know, you're improving your yeah. health. It could be, uh, you know, one of our team trains young kids, Judith ju Jitsu. Um, mm. and like, that's something that's like, you know, working on improving yeah. that, like trying to figure out and find something that you can actually work towards and enjoy the, it's the cliche, but enjoy the journey rather it's than the end result. Almost like a long-term thing. So like you're developing your skills in an area or Sk you're yeah. building something and it's, I think, and it gives you more long-term happiness. Cause yes. I do think, Sometimes, um, you know, like building a business over years, it's not going to make you really happy every day. But I think like your baseline thing, of if you look back over like five years that you've been building something, your baseline of happiness is going to be like higher, yeah. I would say, of like, wow, I've been working yeah. on this thing for a long time. And the same, like you said, with your, with your body or your health. Mm -hmm. If you think I've been like working on my health for five years, that's going to make you feel good yeah. day to day that you're, you're working on on your health in that yeah. way as well i think that's that's one of the reasons people uh like can can switch ro like companies they work for in their career and stuff if you get mm. to a point where you don't you're just plodding plodding along and you don't feel like you're improving or or trying to improve or or doing new things then you can yeah. get to a point where it's just like you're turning up every day like mm. this is shit i'm not actually working on something new and exciting yeah um so yeah what are you building anchors figure out what that is and and build I love that. That's a great way to sum it. Figure out what it is and build, guys. Yeah, no, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, build. Build something. Go on. Then. What about you, Lloyd? What what other kind of things make you happy that the anchors can learn I've from? Got, I've got one more kind of point, and it's not, I don't think it's as cringy this time, just oh, so you know. Finally. Guys. Yeah, sorry. I'm not going to do that again. But something that I really have learned over the years and I think will be really useful is have you heard the. Um, saying comparison is the thief of joy yes we literally have a podcast episode titled that from ages ago do we yeah oh my God. <laughs> that is an early one though my <laughs> memory is not as good so that'll as be years ago yeah um i can't remember who said it but someone good probably mm. um and i something that i've so so not just that that's not just my point but i think a lot of us compare ourselves to others but we only compare the best bits about others so like mm, that's a good point so, so people that put things on social media like the highlight reel look at my like beach body or whatever and we mm. compare ourselves and go oh my body isn't as good as that but mm. that's the thing they're best at yes right they might be they're a terrible at... parent yeah Do you know <laughs> what I mean? but like so lionel messi is great at football mm. you might be better at him than cooking but but he doesn't put online Look Cook at this thing. omelet. So you can go, my omelets are better. Mm. He goes, look at these hundreds of goals I've scored. And you're mm. like, oh, I wish I was better at football. Mm. And like that Love Island star that's got that beach bod and stuff. The mm. great beach bod. Ooh. Which, which one's that? Uh, <laughs> I don't watch it. There's there's one called Kem. Is that right? Is I don't know. I don't watch it. Oh, okay. Don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but but so, so they might have this excellent body and you're comparing your body to theirs. That's their best thing that they put yeah. most time into. And they're, they might be rubbish with their relationship mm. with friends and family. My final example, which I think is the best one, 
you look at Duncan Bannatyne. Yeah. Right? And you think he's got loads of money, massive businesses, much bigger than mine. Mm. He might be rubbish at sex. <laughs> what? So you don't see online, oh, Whoa. another disappointing night for my wife. <laughs> Whereas you could be much better at that than him. So don't always compare yourself oh, to like is brilliant. the best bits I was not expecting everyone. that. But do you know what I mean? It's We always compare ourselves to what everyone else is best at. Yeah. Maybe don't... By the way, Duncan. <laughs> we know you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> you might be... Might be great. It might be... I'm in. I'm out. I'm in. I'm out. <laughs> is, that his, is that his accent? I was trying to do a Dragon's Den reference of I'm out. Sorry, I used oh, to be on it. Oh, God. Um, but yeah, my point mm. without the stupid examples, why why do we compare ourselves yeah. to what everyone's best at and ignore every other aspect of their life I've, and make us feel less happy because of that? I've got another cringy quote to reinforce this that I've just thought of that yeah. I've seen someone else, you know, do an Instagram quote online. Yeah. That it's, you know, um, this is anecdotal, but they say like, don't compare your first step to someone else's 10,000th step. Yeah. It's like we, like we could look at someone like Gary Vaynerchuk, mm. who's got an a marketing agency of hundreds of people. He's been doing it for years and think, why are we not doing that? But, oh, his video is better than yeah. that one we've just put on Instagram. He's got a team of 3,000 people. Even in other examples, I've looked at, sometimes I have, and, and when we, we did the episode, Comparison is a Thief of Joy, go and listen to it if you're interested. I remember giving an example of like, I, I, have found myself looking at other agencies who started after us who look to be more successful and found myself comparing them to them mm. and was like that 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 point i made about your first step to their hundredth i didn't think that that counted i was like why are they way more successful mm. and then sometimes I, I look when you look more into it like they've already had two businesses before that Mm -hmm. And like built that up. And then, so like you, you, you need to understand that you don't always have the context for all these situations. And I, I just don't think it's, it's, all, it's useful to. It's also compare. again, Dan, comparing their best bits. So you might see this agency owner, you're comparing to yourself, be like, why is their business grown faster than ours? Mm. But then you might be way happier with your relationships mm. outside of work because they work every minute yeah. of the day. So you're kind of, again, comparing their, their best, best thing yeah. where it's like, they don't exercise. They don't go to the gym. They're mm. not as healthy as you are. But you don't go, oh, look at that agency owner. I I definitely lift heavier weights than them. Yeah, that's true. Mm. That's a really good point. Yeah. I hope you anchors have enjoyed this episode. I've really enjoyed... I like the positive ones like this. It's yeah. nice to like just talk I'm about... I'm feeling happy. <laughs> good. Good. And I'm just... Yeah. I reckon there's loads of stuff that I'm better at Duncan Bannatyne. Like what? Like... I reckon I can cook a better risotto than him. Yeah. Grow a better beard. Yeah, possibly. Do you smell your farts? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Great example. You could. Um, yeah, and I think there's loads of stuff that you're, you can do better than him as well. You could probably leave us a review better than him. <laughs> I, I reckon you could. Because <laughs> Duncan Bannatine, he's probably got like so much going on, he wouldn't have time to leave yeah. us a five-star review. But... Compared to him, <laughs> you could be so much better. Yeah. So, so thanks, go and, guys. Go and do it. <laughs> yeah, go and do it. Just comparison's the thief of joy. So don't compare yourself to people who haven't left reviews. I don't know if that makes sense, really. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Shall we end it here? Yeah, I think we should, guys. Cool. Anyway, be happy. Have a lovely day, a lovely week, and be grateful for what you've got. I'll be less cringy next week. And we'll see, see you, you in your ears, ears next, next cringe. Week. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs>